Welcome to Ballet Wise. My name is Michael Wise. I'm its host and its creator. Now, we're going to be answering questions that some of our viewers have been asking. If you're a student, you need to try to find someone you can talk to about these. And if you're a teacher, you need to be aware that these are the questions that a lot of dancers need advice on. The reality is they're too afraid to ask them. So I want to start off with the one when a student basically, as we all do at some point in our lives, we ask the question, am I good enough? Now, that can be a very loaded question. Am I good enough? Does that mean am I good enough for that part? Am I good enough? Am I good enough to have a professional career? Am I good enough to move it into the next level? Now, when I have a student that comes to me and says, am I good enough? Look at them in class, look at where they are technically, look at their personality, look at every aspect that the ballet world pretty much requires. I don't want to be overly critical and I don't want to hurt this fragile person. But there are a lot of things that go into this. Do you have the drive? Do you have the work ethic? Are you the kind of person that's so focused on their technique that they can't get out of their head? Or are you the kind of person that feels everything so intently that they can't stop it to focus on their technique? Just because you may not be good enough right now doesn't mean that you can't make some changes so that you can become good enough to meet pretty much anything you want. Not everyone is going to make it into a professional career. So don't put that on your shoulders. But it's okay to look forward to the next level. It's okay to look forward to trying to get that next part or whether you want to move into a more professional direction. You can accomplish all of those. None of those are off limits, but it is going to require the dedication, the time, the energy, and the desire to accomplish all those things. One of our other questions that I've been asked directly, which is basically, how do we develop artistry in our students? Artistry is musicality, it's the emotions, it's the special things that we add within the existing technique that we have. And one of the ways that I work with students to get them to show their artistry, and it's very, very basic, and you always want to start with the basic emotions that all human beings understand. Anger, sorrow, and happiness. Now, understanding that you can do a grand bat mod combination because it has to have that energy, it has to have that flair. So what emotion do you think would be appropriate for grand bat mods? Try doing a grand bat mod combination and feel the anger. Don't just think about being angry, but genuinely feel some anger. Put it into that movement. Use it. That's what artistry begins with. Your musicality is going to change because you are attacking it. Or do an adagio. But now I want you to do the adagio and you know the combination. But now I want you to do the adagio like you're really, really sad. Like you're sad to see someone go. Use experiences within your own life to dictate what that sadness may represent. And when you're doing your adagios, try to incorporate that feeling because you're going to find you will breathe differently. You will move differently. Your head and your arms will move differently. And you're going to be able to, if you can feel it, and I mean really feel it, so will everyone else. You can't be afraid to show your emotions. You cannot be afraid of being judged on your emotions. Because as dancers, our emotions are what set us apart. Our emotions, how we feel, 
what we feel, and being able to use those feelings to influence the way we do a tendu or a port de bras is what really is going to make so many more of your teachers, directors, and even the students in the room. They're going to see you entirely differently because now all of a sudden your body is saying something. So try to find ways, play games. You know what? Have them do a combination and have them be mini mouse or have them be something else that they like, that they can have fun with because they're going to feel that. It's a fun way to do it. It's a fun way to play a game, but it does help with the artistry. So let's move on. Our next question, which is one that we've probably all thought, every single dancer has wanted to ask or has asked, should I go to that audition? And there's a simple answer. If you can go, go. The ballet world, the entertainment industry requires us to consistently put ourselves out there. We have to get in front of all these different people and they're going to have their own understanding. They're going to be looking for very specific things or they don't know what they're looking for, but they'll know it when they see it. And if you're not out there auditioning, one, you're not going to be in a position for them to see you. But the most important thing is it teaches you not to be afraid of the audition. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And eventually you'll get to the point where you'll just walk into the audition and you just don't care about anybody around you. You're there to do your job. But that doesn't come the first time or the second time or the third time. It shows after you've done it multiple times. It might be 10 auditions. It might be 20 auditions. It might be all the way up to auditioning over a hundred times, but over time, you're going to get better at it. So start. If you can get to that audition, you should go to that audition. If you're a dancer and you go to that audition and you didn't like it, well, then you know, that's not where you want to go, but the experience was worth it because you now know something you didn't know. It's important that we learn these things. Because those summer sessions, well, not every summer session is good for everyone. Company auditions, you know what? Not every company is right for everyone. So the more we can get exposed to it, the more we can understand about who they are and what they're looking for, the better we're going to be and the better you're probably going to be. Now, we all deal with this. The ballet world breeds this. We're always going to be judged. We always have expectations that we have to live up to. And there are always standards that we have to meet or exceed. And that's a lot of stress on anyone, especially when you're a teenager. If you're a professional dancer, that's your daily life. These are all things that quite often dancers don't know how to address or how to talk to someone about. Understand what matters because we can't change the fact that we're going to be judged. People have expectations that they want to see from us and then the standards that we all have to live up to. We can't change that. But what we can do is we can believe in ourselves. Now I realize that's easier said than done, but if you believe you're worthy, if you're working at your hardest, if you're giving everything you humanly can, that quite often leads to you becoming more confident because you will have more accomplishments. But don't let yourself move into the position of being desperate. And you're always looking over your shoulder for the next answer that you don't have a question for. The reality is, and like I've said this before, the professional world in classical ballet, it's not for everyone. And do they have unreal ex unrealistic expectations for all of us? Yes. 
But the reason why those expectations are there is because there have, pe there have been people that have not only lived up to those expectations, but exceeded them. And once you're able to rise up, have that confidence, you might be able to set a new standard for the next person. I used to always like to say, and I train my students this way, your job is to get an opportunity, but you have to be prepared for that opportunity. But once you get that opportunity, you should feel sorry for the person who's coming after you because you're going to blow it out of the water. I realize it's a very positive approach when you look at the fact that being judged and having unrealistic expectations and standards, they in themselves aren't positive ideas, but how you approach them can be. I can't change the fact what people are looking for. All I can do, work on myself, be more confident, and show them the best of what I have to offer. Other than that, I can't change what they feel or what they hold me to. And one of the hardest questions, but one of the questions that every single one of us has dealt with. In the ballet world, we deal with depression. We deal with fear. We deal with anxiety. If you're a student, and you feel like you're dealing with those, you're not alone. Talk to people. Whenever you're going through adolescence, you're going to be dealing with a lot of these emotions, regardless whether you're a dancer or not. But all dancers deal with these. Because of the fact that we're constantly always asking for the approval of others, we can develop fear. We can develop anxiety because we don't feel like we're living up to the expectations. As teachers, you need to be looking out for these because the sooner we can catch them, the sooner we see that someone is either falling behind because of fear or someone is becoming overly anxious because they just can't get that pirouette. We've got to find a way where we're helping them understand that there's no reason to have that fear that there's no reason for that anxiety. To them, it's real. To every student, that depression, that fear, and those anxiety feelings are real. I remember them. I'll never forget them. But the reality is, we can't see quite often when we're in that mode of being overly anxious, sad, not feeling worthy, that that's a creation that we've created because we are holding ourselves to too high of a standard. Now, as teachers, quite often we get lost. We see a talented student and we keep raising those expectations. And quite often we can be partially responsible for some of those problems. And I need you to understand that I know that teachers aren't doing that on purpose, but we need to be aware that it's okay to hold a student to a high standard, but we also have to encourage them and ra help raise them to that standard. Anxiety is something that's really hard to deal with, but your anxiety comes from your fear. It comes from your fear of you not being good enough. It comes from your fear of, am I worthy? We're all good enough. The hardest question to ask sometimes is, is ballet good enough for us? You know, our students matter. They're part of our family. And I want you as the student to understand that you're part of this family. If this video is something that really seems to help you, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends because you're not alone in these feelings. And these are all things that probably everyone should hear because I know we've all thought about it. But my name is Michael Wise. This has been Ballet Wise. Keep dancing and be the best person you can be. Bye.